everybody and welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I'll be hanging out with you today as we go over a quick overview of big idea number three from our AP biology curriculum framework. So without any further talk let's go ahead and jump in and see what you need to know. By the end of this video you should understand the theme of big idea number three and give a brief summary of each of the enduring understandings. Now I will admit that big idea number two was an absolute mess. It was roughly about maintaining homeostasis through getting matter and energy, but there was also like cellular transport in there and a bunch of strange stuff that was very difficult to connect together. Big idea three is very clear, it's very straightforward, and it's easy to track. Big number three, <laughs> big idea number three, is that living systems store, retrieve, transmit, and respond to information essential to life processes. So big idea three is all about information, how we store it, how we transmit it, and how we respond to it. Now, one of the themes that we are going to keep coming back to in this unit, I guess, which will take us most of the third quarter, is the idea of communication. And in good communication, you must have content, you must have a signal, and you must have a response. So the first part of big idea number three is going to be all about content in the form of DNA. The next part is going to be about signal, and that's going to be cell signaling and some things related to that. And then the last part is going to be all about how organisms respond to those signals. So let's take a minute and explore each of the enduring understandings, and then we'll be finished. First up is enduring understanding 3A, which is that heritable information provides for continuity of life. Now let's break that down a little bit. Heritable information, that is going to be information that can be passed from one generation to the next in the form of DNA. And that provides for the continuity of life. That means that this ensures that genetic information is passed from parents to their kids. Now, a couple of the topics that we're going to explore in Enduring Understanding 3A include the basics of DNA, the central dogma, so that's the process that takes us from DNA to RNA to protein. We're going to talk about genetic technology. We're going to talk about the cell cycle, which is cell division and what goes wrong if or what results if the cell signal goes bad. We're also going to talk about inheritance, so Mendel and genetics and chromosomes and things related to those ideas. Once we have talked about the molecular basis of heredity, kind of like the nuts and bolts that carry the information, we're going to move on to enduring understanding 3B, which is that expression of genetic information involves cellular and molecular mechanisms. All this means is that all of the information that makes us us or any living thing that thing is coded in the DNA, but that code's useless unless we can actually express the genes as proteins. Furthermore, all of living cells have got the same DNA as the rest of the living cells, so what I mean by that convoluted sentence is that my skin cells have got the exact same DNA as my muscle cells, but they are very different from each other. So we're going to talk about why they are different from each other and the mechanisms that control which genes are turned on and which ones are turned off. From there, we're going to move on to 3C, which is that the process of genetic information is imperfect and a source of genetic variation. Now, if you remember, everything in biology somehow is going to tie back to evolution. And evolution is dependent upon this idea of variation. One of the ways that we get variation is that there are mutations that occur when cells divide. There are also mutations that occur when DNA replicates itself. Also, viruses can introduce genetic variation. So we're going to talk about all of the things that can happen to DNA to provide variation in that gene pool. Major topics in this section are going to include mutations, both DNA and chromosomal. We're going to talk about natural variation systems. So that's going to be things like crossing over in meiosis and, again, going back to natural mutations. And we're going to talk about viruses and how viruses can introduce genetic variation to a gene pool. Once we've talked about all that variation, we're going to move on to 3D which is that cells communicate by generating, transmitting, and receiving chemical signals. So we're going to move from looking at DNA to ways that DNA controls things and the way that cells talk to each other. And this is a very straightforward idea. We're just going to talk about how cells communicate and the result of those communications. So sometimes cells communicate by touching each other. Other times cells communicate by sending signals in the form of electrical signals or hormones. Either way, those signals are going to result in some sort of response. So in this case, we're going to be moving on to the response portion of our unit. 
And then wrapping it all up and bringing it all together is going to be enduring understanding 3E, which is that transmission of information results in changes within and between systems. We're going to look at two major types of systems in this section. We're going to look at the nervous system because that is all about communication. We talked about the endocrine system already, which is another system of communication that we're going to touch on. But mostly we're going to look at the nervous system. We're also going to look at animal behavior because you can think of a group of living organisms as a living system as well. So communication between those organisms and how they respond to the signals that are sent is going to be very important to understanding this idea of information transfer and communication. So that's it. Big idea number three. It's all about communication. I hope you'll stick with us through the next nine weeks as we work on this idea. Enjoy your Christmas breaks and I'll see you again on the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you.